everything is good hopefully we got this audio set mic check mic check hello ladies and gentlemen this is Jamel Mel misery at your services hello ladies and gentlemen this is Mel Mel misery at your service we're just doing a mic check real quick make sure everything good I need to be able to hear myself I need to be able to hear my self Mel, Mel misery. there we go hello ladies and gentlemen we have something juicy for you guys ladies and gentlemen Today, some controversy that erupted this weekend with a controversial tweet from a man named Justin Davis. Now, who, those who don't know who Justin Davis is, he is actually an employee of IGN, pretty high ranking employee at that. And he gave a very controversial tweet on May 2nd that just caused the internet to e erupt the fanboys erupted and i mean i don't know if he's trolling with this tweet or if if he really means this but there are a lot of problems with this particular these tweets that he's made that we're actually going to break down and there's some nice juicy some nice juicy controversy here where like things are getting exposed about this man and stuff like that. So we're gonna get into the video. We're gonna get into. We're gonna break down uh, why his opinion don't really make much sense, and it uh, there's like rumors that he might be getting paid off by a particular platform owner and stuff like that. It's just ooh 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 the juiciness in this is awesome. All right, so first tweet it says since the launch of next gen, I've done a complete 180. And at this point, I would really recommend a PS5. I wouldn't really recommend a PS5 to people, not until it has more games. Get an Xbox Series X and sign up for Game Pass. Now, <clears throat> that particular statement, there's not much wrong with that, with the exception of him adding get an Xbox Series X. So... This is where it starts to fall apart, is when he mentions get an Xbox Series So he's recommend you get an Xbox Series X to sign up for Game Pass, which you don't need an Xbox Series X to sign up for Game Pass. If you have your Xbox One, you can use Game Pass just fine. Or if you have a PC like myself, you, you, can, you can sign up for Game Pass just fine. But he's recommending an Xbox Series X while telling people he can't recommend the PlayStation 5. So that's... Issue number one right there. Now, the the there's no real issue with him saying don't get a PS5 right now because it's not it doesn't really have a lot of games. But he right here is saying, uh, well, yeah, he's basically saying it doesn't have a lot of games, not until it has more games. So he's he's acknowledging that there are games for it. There's just not a lot, which he is absolutely right about that. You have Astro Bot, you have like Destruction All Stars, you have Godfall. You have Returnal, you have Wretched and Clank coming out in like a month or so. So there's not a lot of games. Not a lot of games you would typically say are great games and stuff like that. Not a lot of console sellers is what most people would say for the PlayStation 5, which he has a point. Now, if he would just go on, he'd recommend people just play on Game Pass. That's fine because you don't need an Xbox Series X to play Game Pass. You can do that with your Xbox One and or your PC. So basically what he should have done was just not say anything about Series X and just say, just get Game Pass or something like that. Just don't recommend the next gen consoles at all because honestly speaking, like there is no real reason to get any next gen consoles at all. When it comes to Xbox Series X, there's nothing on the Xbox Series X you can't play on your Xbox One. When it comes to PlayStation 5, with the exception of maybe four or five games, there's nothing on the PlayStation 5 that you can't play on your PlayStation 4. There's only, you have like the Astro Bot game, you have the Destruction All-Star game, you have Returnal, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can probably throw in Demon Souls, but you can 
play Demon Souls on PS3, and you might be able to play Demon Souls via PlayStation. Now I got to check that. I'm not 100 sure about that. But the point is, and Godfall you can play on PC. So uh, the point is, like, you don't really need a next gen console as of yet. Like as of all, all right now, the only thing the next gen consoles are doing, and this is both PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X, are just running your PS4 and Xbox One games better. But in this particular statement, he's basically telling people, don't get a piece at PS5 for the, the reasons I'm giving. is it, It's not enough games to really justify it. And But he then goes on to say, get an Xbox Series X and sign up for Game Pass. So that, that right there is the issue with this particular statement. <clears throat> Had he just said, uh, sign up for Game Pass, there probably wouldn't be much issue with this. Because Game Pass is a, is a really good service. He also says, and this is where the internet erupted. Like, they erupted with this, but this is when they lost their shit. Because, like, this right here is a little controversial. It's like, hey, you probably shouldn't re be recommending the Xbox Series X if... Because <clears throat> the same could be sa said about that. But uh, this right here is where they erupted. So he says, I play an Xbox game literally every night. And I haven't turned on my PlayStation 5 in two months. Which... It's kind of hard to believe when you work for IGN. Now, for those who don't know IGN, IGN is a huge gaming company. They 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 write reviews on games. They 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 talk about games. They they just everything revolving games they do. So for him and being a high level IGN employee, saying that he hasn't played his PlayStation Five in two months, and it goes on to mention Returnal which is a PlayStation 5 game that just released like two weeks ago. Returnal is not that old. It only came out like two weeks ago. Uh, is 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 very hard to believe that he didn't at least try that game, that he didn't at least play the PlayStation 5 to try that game when it's literally his job to do so. It's literally his job to play games so that he can then go on his podcast and, and stuff like that to then talk about the games or at least have enough knowledge to have a competent conversation in revolving the game. And at one point, Returnal was one of the biggest games, at, at least for a whole week, it was where everybody was talking about it. There was a lot of controversy and hype around it, uh, controversy in regards to like you not being able to save and and uh, games crashing and causing you to lose everything and stuff like that. So I would have assumed somebody like him who literally plays games for a living would have at least turned on his PlayStation 5 to at least try out Returnal, uh, especially being part of this huge, big gaming gaming company called IGN, which literally reviews games and stuff like that. He then goes on to say Returnal looks great, but it is $70. Nothing wrong with that. Game Pass is just too good to ignore. Game Pass is a great service. I will not. That's, a, that's, that's not a bad statement at all. But then he says PS5 library will get there someday. I'm not sure what he means by PS5 library. PS5 has all of the same games as PS4. And PS4 had more games than Xbox. So it's like, what do you mean the PS5 library? Would get? In terms of the PS5 library right now, PS5 actually has more next-gen games than Xbox as well, too. Xbox literally has no next-gen next -gen games, except for maybe the medium. I guess you can call the medium a next-gen game. And that is an on Xbox PC exclusive. It is console exclusive at the very least. Whereas I already mentioned at least four PlayStation 5 exclusives. Astrobot, Destruction All-Stars, uh, Returnal, Godfall. And you also have the Ratchet and Clank coming out next month. So, uh, so for him to say the PS5 library will get there someday is just it's so disingenuous. So dis disingenuous. And he says, and it will be expensive. Now, that's an that's a issue I have. Right here, because he says that like the, these prices, a lot of these game prices are not the same on Xbox. Like Call of Duty is the same price on PlayStation 5 as it is on Xbox. It's not like NBA 2K is the same price on Xbox as it is on PlayStation. There, There's no difference in prices. Like if he's going based off of like a PS5 game being $70, $70 at launch, I mean, 
as of right now, Xbox don't really have any next gen exclusives to to kind of compare that with. So that's why this is so controversial right here. But like I said, people was just exposing things. Like, so his name is Aaron Justin. So he says he plays his Xbox literally every night. So people wanted to test that. And what they did was they pulled up his gamer card for his Xbox. And literally, at the time of that posting, he hadn't played his Xbox in two weeks. Two weeks. How do you say you I play an Xbox game literally every night and haven't turned on your PS5 in two months. And that was as of May 12th, 2021. As you can see, it pops up right there. He did. He sent that tweet at 9.43 p.m. How do you twist your mouth or your fingers to say something like that when you hadn't played your Xbox in two weeks? That's a full pay period. That's a full pay period for most people. For most Americans... You get paid every two weeks. So his job is to play video games. That's why this is so ironic. Your job is to play uh, video games, but you haven't done your job in two weeks. Were you on vacation? Like, what? what, what, what is that? Did you say you play your game every every day? Like, literally every night. So that right there is, is something off about that. He said he hasn't, and then like this right here, the statement right here where he says he hasn't played his PlayStation 5 in two months. PlayStation 5 just had a really big exclusive game that launched like two weeks ago. So something tells me like the two weeks ago is when he dropped the Yakuza game, the Yakuza Kiwami 2 game that he was playing and probably started playing Returnal, honestly speaking, so that he can then go on, you know, his podcast and stuff like that and have conversations about this game in order to draw in you know, those views, which will then dr bring in the ad revenue, which will then get him and his colleagues paid. That's my assumption. And that's why it's so crazy that he would even tweet something like that. Like, I don't know if he was trolling or what, or if he's like getting paid under the table. There is a theory that Microsoft may have been, you know, paying him with like gifts and stuff like that, uh, which really draws in the, the question of his legitimacy when it comes to his reviews and stuff like that. And that that's just a that's a big deal. That's not good at all. Like the controversy around this is biblical. Biblical, I'm telling you. Because again, ha played this game. He literally plays this game every night, but hasn't played it in two weeks. Ironically, Returnal came out two weeks ago, but he hasn't turned his PlayStation 5 on in two months. The irony of there. Game Pass is a good service, but the fact that he says library, his PS5 library will get there someday. He, he put dot, 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 like, like PlayStation isn't known for having some really big, awesome exclusives. But he also adds it will be expensive, which is another controversial statement because the prices between Xbox games and PlayStation games are pretty much the same. Pretty much this game. So the fact that the library will get there someday is is controversial because PlayStation 5 actually has more next gen games than Xbox Series X. And he says it will be expensive, but the prices presumably are going to be the same before between Xbox and PlayStation 5. Uh the the, the reason why we can't really say definitively is because Xbox doesn't really have any next gen exclusives right now ex outside of the the medium which is more of a double A game. Uh granted I think Return is also technically a double A game too. But he says this because of Game Pass. Now this is this is going to be my next point here. He's mentioning it being expensive because of uh Game Pass with PlayStation, I mean with Xbox, you have the day and date thing going on where any Xbox game that comes out also launches in this um, Game Pass, which means technically you don't have to pay the retail price for it, which is awesome. I, I admit, and that's what makes Game Pass really good. And his statement saying Game Pass is too good to ignore is, is not wrong. He's not wrong in that. One thing he is ignoring when it comes to PlayStation 5 and, and the PlayStation is he's ignoring PlayStation Now, which in itself is just as good, almost as good as of a value as Game Pass. And I'm, I'm going to get into the reasons why I feel that it's almost as good as a value as Game Pass. Uh, I'm going to get into that 
actually right now. So uh, the reason why I feel like PlayStation Now is almost as good of a value as Game Pass is for the simple fact that PlayStation Now is actually cheaper. PlayStation Now is cheaper than Xbox Game Pass. It, it really is. Uh, when you look at PlayStation Now, it, you can get it for about $60 a year. It's sixty dollars a year for PlayStation Now, and it actually has more games. PlayStation Now has up to I want to say eight hundred games or something like that. So you're getting like I want to say double the amount of games on PlayStation Now than you're getting on Game Pass for a cheaper price. It's sixty dollars a year, whereas Game Pass is fifteen dollars a month. That equates to almost two hundred dollars. My math: fifteen, ten months. That's one hundred and fifty. Uh, yeah, that's about 175 almost $200 a year for Game Pass. Granted, Game Pass is what makes Game Pass slightly better than PlayStation Now, even though it has less games, is the fact that you do have the day and date games. You do have the games that come day and date when they launch. So, for example, you do have, like, your Gears of War. You do have, like, your Medium your MLB The Show, your Outriders, things like that, the games like that, which gives a lot of value to this particular game because to this particular platform because you don't typically have to wait as long. Now, PlayStation Now, on the other hand, does not get games date and date for the most part, but they do come. They do come. Hence in point, the Avengers game. This game came out maybe seven months ago eight months ago and it is on playstation now so with playstation now you do have to wait a couple of months maybe even a year or so but they do eventually come to this particular platform so it's really a toss-up on on your particular preference now with game pass you obviously have your your xbox games your microsoft games such as like your halos your gears your forces your plague tales innocence and stuff like that and uh, on the other side, PlayStation have their exclusives. You feel me? They have their... What exclusive they have here? They have, like, their Neos. They, you have your Last of Us. Your Sunset Overdrive. No, not Sunset Overdrive. The, um, your Infamous Games. Your Detroit Become Humans. Your Until Dark. Your Bloodborns. Things like that. So... Both platforms have their pros and cons. It's more of a matter of preference. If you're looking for quantity, quantity, PlayStation Now is actually the better service. So this whole thing, it being too expensive, PlayStation Now is actually the better service because you're getting more games at a cheaper price. And granted, you may not be getting the newer games day and date, you will eventually get those games. Those games will eventually come to the PlayStation Now platform. Now, the Xbox is a great platform because where it is more expensive, like we're talking almost triple the price of PlayStation Now, you do get those games day and date. You do get those games when they come out. A lot of those games, not all of these games, I have to preference that. There are games that come out that will not come to Game Pass 1 at all. Uh, or two day and date. They may not. They may come like months, if not years later. Uh, but the games that do come day and date is is that's really awesome because they do get big games from time to time to come day and date, such as MLB The Show, Outriders, and I think they have like a new game coming out, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. That's coming out like day and date, as well as just all of the the Microsoft exclusive games are day and date. So that's what makes this platform pretty good. So it's really a toss up. So it's it's. His statement and his tweets here are just, they come off as very disingenuous. They come off as somebody who may be potentially being paid to say these things because he is on a platform, a gaming platform that is extremely reputable. Uh, when you think of like gaming reviews and stuff like that, IGN is among the first sites you think of in order to check out like a gaming review or a gamer's opinion or something like that so he has a lot of sway and influence in this particular field in this particular genre right here so for him to say a statement like this can persuade can potentially persuade people who are on the fence of whether they should get a playstation 5 and or series x 
to potentially maybe get a Series X. Uh, I'm on the fence that you don't actually need to get either. And I do not recommend you get either as of right now because his statement right here isn't wrong about not until it has more games, but that can be applied to both platforms. Whereas the PlayStation 5 has maybe four exclusives, four or five exclusive games. None at the moment I would consider like a system seller for the most part. Uh, not until maybe Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, a lot of these games you can get on PC. So if you do have a PC, you can basically have the best of both worlds. You can sign up for both Game Pass and PlayStation Now and get all of the, 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 the exclusives as well as you know cool third party games so for example like you look at a uh, a platform like um playstation now people may not realize this but they have a lot of playstation exclusives uh including like including um horizon zero dawn you do have your horizon zero dawns here you do have like your your kills on shadow fall which Kills on Shadow Fall is kind of garbage. I wouldn't recommend that game. Uh, you have your Resistance 3. You have your, your Shadow of the Colossus. I believe this might be the original PlayStation 2 version, though. That's lame. They should definitely have the, the PlayStation 4 version up there. Uh, so you do have, like, your Bloodborne and stuff like that. There's definitely more that they're not showing here. But you do have, like, some really big name exclusives like Bloodborne and Horizon Zero Dawn. And stuff to that nature. Where is Horizon Zero Dawn? I know I've seen it up here. Is it right here? No, see? Horizon Zero Dawn. So you do have some, like, really big PlayStation PlayStation exclusives here. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn being among one of the bigger PlayStation, PlayStation exclusives. So you do have some really big PlayStation exclusives. So, ha! Ah, this, this controversy is crazy. So, uh, again, you've seen... He hasn't played his Xbox in, in two weeks. The other thing, too, that I want to bring up is his gamer store, for somebody who, whose job is to play video games, and I, I'm assuming his preferred platform is Xbox due to the fact that he plays his Xbox every day. Womp, womp, womp. His game score is pretty low. <laughs> it's only about 36,000. Now, to put things into greater perspective, I'm mostly, my preferred platform is PlayStation. Right, my preferred flat, um, platform is PlayStation. I didn't get my Xbox until 2017, and I mostly just get the Xbox for for its exclusive games. So, but as you can see, my gamer score is 21,000. Now, granted, this is I I haven't had I haven't had my 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 Xbox very long. I only had it for the past four years, 2017, and I mostly just play exclusives on it, and I already have a gamer score of 21,000. This guy right here gets paid to play video games. I also, I don't get paid to play video games. This is something I do on my hobby, as a hobby. He gets paid to play video games. I'm presuming he, he might have had an Xbox since its launch, uh, I'm not even talking about 360. I'm just going to assume maybe Xbox One since its launch, which is 2013. And his gamer score, I'm more than halfway to reaching his gamer score. You feel me? That's a problem. That's a big problem for somebody who plays. Because I, I admit, I do not play my Xbox every day. I mostly just play it for the exclusives. And as you know, Xbox don't have a lot of exclusives. You feel me? They don't have a lot of exclusives. So as you can see here, mostly playing it for the exclusives. Don't really play it very much. Every now and then, because I have Game Pass, I do play other games, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mostly just play it for the exclusives. And I have a 21,000 gamer score. And that's, that's more than halfway to somebody who plays it very often. So it just begs the question... For somebody whose job is to play games, are you playing games? Like, or are you just taking advantage of the industry? You're somebody who just likes to talk about games because it makes you money. That's that's the real controversy here. So uh, I'm basically going to wrap this up. There's nothing more that needs to be said. This dude, he's coming off as a bit of a fraud, unfortunately. 
Um, I don't know if he's doing this just to troll. I hope this is just a troll for his sake because it's just it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe he, he worded it wrong or something like that. I mean, he sounds pretty deliberate when he says this. It sounds like he does he is doing it to get the fanboys angry. But for somebody who has a voice in the industry, a very powerful voice being in the company that he works at, he, he's in a position to influence people. So a statement like this can influence somebody who's on the fence between the PlayStation 5 and, a, and an Xbox Series X. And if this is like a troll or something like that, he can be influenced that person in the wrong directions for the wrong reasons. And that's why this is this is a real issue right here. So again, since the launch of next gen, I've done a complete 180. And at this point, I wouldn't really recommend a PlayStation 5 to people, not until it has more games. That there's nothing wrong with that statement. Uh, under, other than the whole 180, Oh, no, there's nothing really wrong with that statement had he ended it there. But he says get an Xbox Series X and sign up for Game Pass. You don't need an Xbox Series X to sign up for Game Pass. That's the issue with this particular statement. This right here, I mean, I, almost everything is wrong with this statement. I play an Xbox game literally every night. We already debunked that. Haven't turned on your PlayStation 5 in two months. Kind of sort of debunk that due to the fact that your job is to play video games and a brand new video game just came out two weeks. Coincidentally, around the time you actually stopped playing your Xbox game, uh, there's nothing wrong with this particular statement. It looks great, but it is $70. A lot of people do have a problem justifying the fact that Return is $70. Some people think it's more of a $50, $60 game. Game Pass is too good to ignore. Nothing wrong with that. Game Pass is a really good good platform it's it's, it's it's good it really is good um i mean you it is more of a matter of preference whether you prefer game pass or playstation now but it is nonetheless it's a great service playstation 5 library will get there someday uh-huh. eh. <laughs> i mean i agree that the 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 playstation 5 library isn't great at the moment but it's better than Xbox's library. So for him to say, we'll get there someday, it's like, get where someday? Like, it's already, it already has the best library. <laughs> so it's like, especially, it's, and then it will be expensive. So like, he's deliberately, deliberately, when he mentions Xbox, he's, he's referring to Game Pass, but deliberately leaving out PlayStation now which is a is a service equivalent to to game pass so yeah we'll, we'll leave it there uh oh, he, he's actually a director director at ign so yeah yeah justin um Oh, I, I do want to mention though like because of the shit that he got for uh, people exposing him for not playing his his game in two weeks his, his Xbox in two weeks after this whole statement about him playing it every night. He did privatize his, his, his setting. So now people can't really look at his gamer tag and gamer score and none of that stuff like that. Unfortunately, he had to go to privatizing it because people were just exposing him for 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 the lie, basically. Uh, so I find that very comedic. So, uh, Justin, this is this is going to be rough for you. This, uh, I don't know if this is a troll. It doesn't sound like a troll. It sounds like you're actually being legit. This is rough. Uh, this is going to be, you're in a situation where the company that you're at, people may not take IGN as serious anymore because there are people like you making pretty false statements like this, pretty false and disingenuous statements like this. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with Game Pass, but you can't say, you can't big up Game Pass and then try to knock down the PlayStation 5 library. Like the PlayStation 5 don't have all of the same games that the PlayStation 4 has. That the PlayStation 5 basically don't have all of the same games that the Xbox have. Um, except for, you know, obviously the, the Xbox exclusives. But they have their own exclusives to compensate for that. You can't say that the, the PlayStation 5 library is lacking 
or it's going to be too expensive when they literally have PlayStation Now, which has a bigger library than Game Pass and is actually at a cheaper price than Game Pass. You can't really say that. You got to when you when you're tweeting something like that, you got to give the pros and cons of both. Because uh, if, if you don't, you just come off as being disingenuous, and that actually comes off as paid off for the most part. Because uh, again, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get off soon, but if you look at Game Pass, if you literally look at Game Pass, they have a lot of the same games as PlayStation Now. So you have like your Dead Space, you have your Resident Evil. This is obviously a like an exclusive, uh, exclusives, exclusives. You have your Rage. You have your Dishonored 2, uh, you have the Bethesda games. So you have your Doom, your, your Fallouts, your Wolfensteins, Doom Eternals, Young Bloods, and all that stuff. Your Dishonored, your Fallout 4s, your Prey, your Evil Within, and things like that. And then you go to like the, the PlayStation and they basically have all of the same games plus you know its own its own batch of games so I'm trying to find cuz they I know see they got the World War Z that was also here on the game pass World War Z uh, recently added uh, so you have your uh, Dark Siders Genesis. That's also on here as well. That's also a, a Game Pass thing too. I'm not, I'm not gonna look for it right now. Uh, you have your Remnant from your Ashes. I, I'm pretty sure that's also on PlayStation now. I know this is also a game that PlayStation actually gave for free recently, as well. You have your Bioshocks. Your obviously your PlayStation exclusives. See, you have your Rage Two, your Vermintide, which. I believe that's also on X, Xbox as well. Vermintide. So, like, you have a lot. You have your Dead Space games. I'm pretty sure there's Dead Space on here as well. So, like, you have a lot of games that cross over. Like, it's not it's not like, like everything on Game Pass is just on Game Pass and none of it is on, is on playstation now at all horror here we go so you have your doom your bloodborne your until dawn your vampire you have your resident evils limbo you have the prey like i said uh metroid dead space like i said they have dead space as well but see these are games that like crossover you have devil may cry games like you can't <laughs> you can't talk about like game pass without bringing up playstation now because a lot of the especially the third party games are the same like they have a lot of the same third party games you feel me the only thing you can really touch on is the exclusives that's on game pass and the fact that a lot of those come day and date or sooner to game pass than they do to playstation now Whereas PlayStation and now again has a shit ton of exclusives, but don't get me wrong, you have like your Detroit Become Human, your Until Dawns and stuff like that, your Sly Coopers, your Bloodborns. They have a crap ton because PlayStation just has more exclusives than Xbox, period. Uh you have double the amount of games. It's and it's cheaper. So you, you gotta take into account both both platforms have their pros and their cons, you feel me? So that being said, I'm just going to end it there. I just wanted to talk about this. This was huge over this weekend. Like, the internet was really erupting over this because this is a guy with a lot of power, a lot of influence in this gaming community. And for him to give a, a statement like this really comes off as, as really being disingenuous to his audience and him trying to persuade them uh, in a manner that, that seems like he could be being paid off by uh, by Microsoft. So... Hope you like this video. Like, favorite, follow, share, all that good stuff. And remember, y'all.